here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn now to the widow of a U.S. Army Ranger who on Saturday confronted former Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld about her husband's suicide. Ashley Joppa Hageman introduced herself to Rumsfeld during a book signing by handing him a copy of her husband's funeral program at a base south of Tacoma, Washington. She says Rumsfeld inspired her husband to join the Army after 9-11, but he later became disillusioned with the reason for the war. Her husband was 25-year-old Staff Sergeant Jared Hageman. He killed himself ahead of what his wife says was his ninth deployment to Iraq and Afghanistan. His body was found June 28th at the Joint Base Lewis-McChord uh, in Washington state. More than 18,000 soldiers returned to uh, Fort Lewis from combat tours last year. And while the Army says it's trying to shore up mental health services there, Ashley Joppa Hageman questions its success. She joins us now from Seattle, Washington, to talk about her husband, Jared. Um, uh, we also called an official from the Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington to join us on the show, but they were unable to accommodate our request. Um, Ashley, our condolences on the death of your husband, first off. Um, thank you very much for being with us. And thank you for having me. Can you talk about what you did with Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld? Explain the scene this weekend. Um, I just had, um, information that Donald would be here on Fort Lewis doing a book signing and, um, it was someone's idea to actually go and see him at the book signing and I was, I was excited and I agreed. I was like, yeah, let's go. Let's do this. I, I want to confront the man who whose lies led my husband to join the military and so many other soldiers. And that's what I wanted to do, and that's what I did. And for me, that that was a really exciting moment for me, for well, my husband. I know it was, too. You handed him the funeral program of Jared, of your husband, Staff Sergeant Hageman? Yes, I did. Um, I told him that I wanted him to see my husband and so he would know he could put a face with at least one of the soldiers that had, that had um, lost their lives because of his lies from the 9-11. And what was his response? All I remember is him saying, oh, I heard about that. And after that, all I remember is being bombarded with security personnel and being pushed out and told not to return. It, it would have been maybe not so difficult if maybe he had actually made my husband feel or made it sound like my husband was an actual person, but to call him and say that, rather or not I heard about him or heard about, you know, Jared, that, that was a blow. That one really hurt. But it just proves that our soldiers don't mean anything to anybody who's in power. Were you actually taken away from the former Secretary of Defense, from Rumsfeld? Yes, they grabbed us by our arms and pushed us along. And on the way out, I had stopped because um, Jorge had gone with me, and I had stopped to try and see where he was at because I didn't know where he was because we had so much security around us. And they just kept, like, pushing me along, and he just said, keep moving. And we were peaceful, we were calm, and so I just kept doing what he said. Tell us about Jared. How many tours of duty did he serve in Iraq and Afghanistan? He was an army ranger, like Pat Tillman. He, yes. Um, he was just an amazing person. He was so charming and so he, he loved life. He loved, he had so much respect and love for everybody. And 
he put everyone before him and he was just he was an amazing person how I many mean, when i first met him i'm sorry how many tours of duty did he serve um like i said before possible you know around eight or nine um i'm thinking it's more around the eight mark but it's yeah eight or nine this would have been and he was in uh patrick uh, he was in pat tillman's battalion um second of the 75th ranger regiment yes did he know him no i don't believe so what was it about Donald Rumsfeld that inspired Jared to go into the military? Pretty much the um, the whole Bush administration and their their lies about you know WMDs and my husband was the kind of person who stood up for what he believed in and he loved this country and. He thought he was doing what needed to be done. And over the years, he found out the truth. And it, every tour just, just ruined him. It took a part of him every time. Can you talk about whether Jared sought help? Um, talk about his suffering through through the continued tours um, after the first few tours he didn't he changed he was cold he didn't want to talk um, it was really rough and I'd have to say in 09 when he finally came back from maybe his fourth deployment I'm not sure he actually tried to tell—he told the Rangers that he quit. He didn't want nothing to do with them. And he admitted himself to Five North, and they gave him counseling for his drinking. And after a while, they told him that he had to do it on his own time. It was interfering with his work. They put him in the S5 shop in order to accommodate his counseling. Um, and a few times they had given him some antidepressants, some sleeping pills, which only made it worse because it was like a 30-day supply. Then as soon as it ran out, he had to go through the process all over again to get anything. So. It was just more of a hassle than anything. Ashley, your husband was not alone. At Fort Lewis, July saw a peak of suicides, five in one month. There were nine in 2009, nine in 2010, five in just July alone. Yet the military is not calling your husband's um, suicide a suicide, though they're saying it's a self-inflicted wound. Um, there's suicides at JBLM every month, whether or not they report them as suicides. I, I don't, I can't comment on that. I don't know. So I wouldn't say it's spiked. I would say that it's probably pretty, pretty, pretty high every month. Um, it's not anything new. And... Yes, it, it was self-inflicted. Whether or not that they had any, um, not saying, but any, any take or part in my husband taking his life. That's what the uh, the investigation Ashley, is. Ashley, we have to leave it there, but we're going to do an interview and put it online at democracynow.org. Thanks so much for joining us.